Hi, and welcome to Creative Chelsea. Today, I'd like to share with you an alternative card idea using the Winter Woods Paper Pumpkin Kit from October 2019. So here's the card I designed, and I did use a lot of um, products from my craft room, and so there are just a couple elements that come from the kit. So this would be a really good card to make when you have just a couple extra pieces left over. So the first thing we're going to do is use this Fluid 100 watercolor paper. And I really like this paper because it is smoother than a lot of other watercolor paper. And so stamping on it um, gives you a really nice image. So when we cut it in half, we're going to have a three and a half by five inch piece. And we're gonna start by heat embossing this with some shimmery um, embossing powder. <clears throat> so I'm gonna be using Versamark and my snowflake stamp from the kit. And before I begin, I'm going to just put a little embossing buddy on my paper. And this just helps remove the static electricity that is on the paper. So I'm going to be using my paper piercing mat to help the image stamp better. So get a little Versamark on your stamp and just go ahead and stamp it. And because we can't see the image very well, I'm just going to add the powder. And like I said, this is a shimmery white powder. It's a new product that is in the um, Stampin' Up! main catalog. So you can go ahead and order that if you don't have it. So by adding the powder, I can kind of see where I've stamped and where I want to stamp next. So just continue to repeat the process. All right, so I've got all my snowflakes stamped and they have the powder on them. So I'm going to go ahead and take my heat embossing tool and I'm going to heat this up. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but they are shimmery, white, and beautiful. I love that embossing powder. All right, for our next step, we're going to watercolor this with our Night of Navy ink. And I love the Night of Navy ink for watercoloring. You can see from my original card that it really separates and gives you a bunch of different beautiful blues. And so it's perfect for that um, kind of sky or nighttime scene. So what I do is I either will put a drop of the reinker in the lid or I'll like squish the ink pad together like this. And then that puts ink in that lid. And then I love the water or the aqua painters. So I'm going to use that and I'm just going to pick up some squeezing to put some water with the ink. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick up some color and start adding a wash over those snowflakes. And so you'll start to really see those pop. And it doesn't need to be perfect. A little bit of Imperfection is what I love about watercoloring. You can start to see those colors separate. It's just beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna give a minute for that to kind of seep into the paper. And then I'm gonna go back over and add some darker colors behind the snowflakes. So this is the White Baker's Twine and I've dyed it this beautiful red color. And there are a couple ways that you can dye your um, twine. And one way is to run it across the ink pad and that just will kind of dye it on the top, on the surface. 
This way I've, I wanted to separate these fibers for the card. And so I wanted to dye it um, all the way through. So the way I went ahead and did that is I've got a piece and this one's a, a little different thickness, but and it's the same process. So I've got a piece of the twine and I've got it wet. So this one is already wet and I'm gonna put it in a baggie. So here's my baggie. And the reason for the baggie is to keep my fingers from getting all different colors. So in the baggie, I've put some drops of the reinker, and I think I've done about five drops. And then you're just gonna close it up and then smush that color into that twine. And you can see that it starts to dye it, that color. And if you need more reinker or a little bit more water, you really don't want to put too much water um, with your reinker, or it really will dilute it. That's why I just put, I just get the twine wet because I feel like that's just enough to kind of help move the color through the twine. So once that is um, I'm completely saturated with color. I now I'm going to take it out of the bag. And one way to do this, we don't want to put our hands in this bag because it is, you know, red. So one way is you can find some tweezers or I've got a crochet hook and you want a scrap piece of paper. So here's a scrap piece of paper. And you're just going to grab that twine with your crochet hook or some tweezers and just kind of squeeze as much of that water out of the twine as you can as you're pulling it. I really don't want to touch it, but I think I'm going to have to. Okay, so I'm going to pull it off and then put it on your scrap paper. Close this up and then you can heat it up with your heat emboss tool um, and it will dry or you can just let it air dry. But what's really great about it is that um, it doesn't really rub off once it's dry because the color has saturated those fibers. Sometimes when you use um, the other technique where you just rub it over the ink pad, it kind of will um, rub off a little bit because the ink is just on top of the fibers. So it's a really great technique for that and kind of fast, especially if you were to heat dry this with your um, heat tool. Okay, so we're gonna come back to our card, get a little darker color and you can see how the, that is separating. It's just so beautiful. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come back and add color behind my snowflakes because I really want them to pop. So kind of try to make it look natural. And some over here, going right to the edge. And some behind this one. Okay, so we've got some different layering of watercolor and um, added some darker color behind those snowflakes to really give that sky some depth. Don't forget to subscribe to November's Paper Pumpkin Kit Winter Wonders. This kit will include 24 tags in four different designs. Subscribe by November 10th. Click on the link in the description box below. So for my first card, I went ahead and stamped these snowballs and I did it in Night of Navy, but I did a stamp off, stamp on technique. For this card, I wanted to try it without the snowballs and just kind of see um, how it looked with a little bit of variation. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side. And if you want those snowballs, go ahead and stamp them now. So a stamp off, stamp on technique is where you ink up your stamp, then you stamp off of your project, and then you stamp on your project. And it gives you kind of a lighter color of the original ink. So let's go ahead and put some of our card together. So I'm using a gray granite card base. And that goes back um, as our base. And then we've got this on top. And then we've got some poppy parade that peeks out on the sides. And I have to confess that um, my poppy parade cardstock is all gone. So I've ordered some more. But um, I wanted to do this video before it arrived. So I need to find some poppy, poppy parade pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut down between my rows of birds. And I'm just going to try and use this really skinny strip to hide behind that. If you've got some poppy parade and you um, want to go ahead and just put a piece of poppy parade cardstock in the back, you're going to want a piece that is about, um, so this is three and a half, so you're going to want one that's about three and three-fourths inches by um, whatever height you like. So I've kind of gone with a, a wider one, and I think that's about three inches. Um, but you could go with two inches or even one inch, depending on what you have and kind of the look that you're going for. So I'm going to pop off these birds. So I can keep those for another project. And I'm just going to trim right between those birds. Okay. And I'm going to flip it and do it to the other side. All right. So that is just extra and I'm going to put that to the side and this I'm going to add some snail along and the same here. Okay. So I want this to be about a half inch from the bottom. So I'm just going to line it up with my grid paper and then I'm going to place this about a half inch alright so that little piece is just peeking out I'm going to do the same to the other side so this time I'm going to go from the top so I'm going to do a half inch away and then have it line up So it looks like there's one full sheet back there, but it really is two strips attached. The next thing I'm going to do is add my twine. So this is about 18 inches of twine. And sometimes I go like this, where I find the middle and then put that where I'd want the middle to be. And then wrap each end around so then I know that I've got enough twine. I probably should have gone with 20 inches instead of 18. That would have given me just enough extra so that it wasn't, wouldn't be so tight to tie. Okay. So I've got my, my ribbon wrapped around or my twine. And I'm just going to bring that up about an inch or so from the base of the poppy parade. And then let's go ahead and grab some pieces from the kit. So I've got a piece of wood um, strip and I have a um, tree branch. And so I've used this tree branch in a different way. Um, we're going to snip it off the bottom. And then we're going to take off the branches. 
And you just have to take off the branches on the outside. You can leave the inside ones so that the paper stays together. And then find your shiny side. And because we want that side to be up. So this wood strip goes right on top of the ribbon. So just add that with some snail. Then just evenly place that. And then this I'm gonna add with some glue, just in a couple spots. And it goes with the skinny trunk on top and the fat trunk on the bottom. It kind of just wraps around this twine. So we kind of want to find the center. You know what, I'm gonna snip this just because it's having a hard time. So I'm going to find the center and this just one's going to go below the twine. And this one is going to go above it. Okay. So just hold it down until that glue adheres. And then we can go ahead and add this to our card. I'm just going to use a little bit of glue. And it just gets centered in the middle of our card base. And now we're going to stamp our greeting. And the greeting I've used is the Winter Wishes. So the Winter Wishes in the stamp set comes as a long greeting. So I'm going to show you how I made it um, separate so that they're on top of one another. So I also used the inside part of the tree's die cut out. And I'm just going to place that in my Stamparatus. And you don't have to use a Stamparatus, but I do think it's um, really great for positioning things like this. So I've got my greeting and I'm just going to position it where I want it. And I'm going to start with the winter. I'm going to just put it right here in the middle. And I'm going to pick it up with my plate. And then I'm going to get the Knight of Navy. And I'm going to ink it up really well. And then I'm going to take some washi tape or any other kind of tape you have and I'm covering up the part of the stamp that I don't want on my paper. So that would be the wishes. So right now I'm just stamping winter and that turned out really well. If you had a hard time, like if it didn't stamp very well, you can just re-ink it and stamp again and then take off that tape. and clean your stamp. Okay, so the next thing is you're gonna take off your stamp and now you're going to line up the next part. So this is the wishes that I'm lining up and I'm just kind of eyeballing it, making sure it's going about the same direction as the word winter. Pick it up with your plate, ink it up, And now we're going to cover the winter part of the stamp. Oh, you can't see that. I'm sorry. So you're covering the stamp with some washi tape. So you can see here that it's covered and then you're stamping the word wishes.
So the next step is we need to cut this. And what I've done is I've just kind of used my paper cutter and I've lined the words up with one of the lines of my paper cutter so that I kind of get the same distance around the whole greeting. Okay, so the final size is about one and three fourths by one and a quarter. If you have like a decorative label that you want to use to cut this out, you're welcome to do that. What I wanted to do was just keep something a little simple and use a half inch circle punch. And I'm just putting in the corners about a fourth. So I'm, you know, it's a fourth of a circle that I'm making and then punching out that corner. So this greeting is going to sit right here on the right side. It's kind of covering up these little extra pieces and we're going to put it down with some dimensionals. And I'm putting them at the top and the bottom and none in the middle because that's kind of a thicker area of the card with the twine. And so I don't want to um, have anything making the card thicker than it needs to be. So butt it up right next to that knot, find the center and lay it down. So then this knot, let's go ahead and untwist these edges. just to give it some texture and interest. And then we've got a couple accessories that we're adding. One of them is one of these cute little cardinals and he's just gonna go right up here in the corner. And I'm gonna put him with some, just a little drop of glue and use my pickup tool to place him. And then I'm also had some leftover snowflakes. So I'm going to put those snowflakes down with my shimmery crystal effects glue. <clears throat> I'm going to start by putting three little dots down here at the bottom. And then maybe one over here and one right here. Then I'm going to bring out five snowflakes. Oh, four more. Use my pickup tool and I'm just gonna put them over those crystal effects and then press down. And what's the reason I'm using the crystal effects is because there's these little holes in the snowflakes and um, I thought it would be fun to have that crystal effects kind of squirting out through the hole and making like a little uh, drop of dew or, you know, just looking kind of cute. So, okay. Oh, and the last thing is I felt like this bird needed a little bit of attention. He's kind of dull because of the paper. So I added some shimmery crystal effects to him and just kind of dabbed on some of that glue and spread it around. So you can see how that makes him really shiny and kind of gives him more interest. 
since he's part of that um, focal point. So you can see here that he's just a little more shiny, a little more fun. All right, so we've got our two cards and you can see the slight difference in adding those snowballs or keeping them off your card and you can kind of choose which one you like the best. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, like, and share. Visit creativechelsea.com for more information about Paper Pumpkin and to start getting your monthly kit. Have a creative day. Bye.